Hello, and welcome to episode six of the Audio Fundamentals course. Today, we're going to look at the decibel. We're going to define it and look at what it really is. We'll examine how the decibel functions in the three audio domains of the acoustic, analog, and digital worlds, and we'll do a brief introduction to equalization, or EQ. So a lot of people think of the decibel as a unit of measurement. The decibel actually measures nothing, absolutely nothing. It only compares to things, like a ratio. Now this is the confusing part, because if that's true, if it doesn't actually measure anything, then how come people say things like, that rock concert was so loud it reached 120 decibels, I had a great time. Or, the law in my city says that if factory noise is higher than 90 decibels, we have to wear hearing protection. And if it's higher than 110 decibels, we have to wear double hearing protection, things like that. Or, the anechoic chamber in Minneapolis is the quietest room in the world at negative 9.4 dB ambient noise. So, how do these make sense? if the decibel actually doesn't measure anything, and how can a room have a negative amount of sound? The missing piece from those three statements is that the word decibel is incomplete. They're actually specifying a reference point without stating it. In the acoustic domain, they're talking about sound pressure level, or SPL. So when somebody says, 60 decibels SPL, they mean it's a certain number of times louder than the reference level, the reference amount of force pushing the air molecules around. That's why you can have a negative amount of decibels, because it's a smaller amount of force pushing the air molecules around. Now, in order to have actually no sound at all, you couldn't have the air molecules moving at all, which means that the temperature would have to be absolute zero, which is a little chilly even in Minnesota. Now, the trouble with all of this is that when you start getting into the math, it becomes... It's awful. It's awful. You don't ever want to get into the math of decibels. Just don't worry about any of the math. Use your ears. Good rule of thumb is double loudness is adding around 6 to 10 dB, depending on the musical context. Now... Even though we're going to throw out most of the math, many of the concepts are very important to keep in mind because they'll help you know what to do and know which world you're in and how to interpret decibel measurements. So the three most important things you should be aware of are three common reference points, one in each of the audio domains. First is SPL in the acoustic domain. Zero decibels SPL means you can just barely hear it in a room that's already quieter than that, and you go up from there. So the point of reference is extremely low, and we measure upwards from there. Nearly all of the measurements that are going to be useful in the acoustic domain, measured in decibels SPL, are going to be positive. In the analog domain, you're working with a reference voltage. There are several references. One common one is 0 dB equals 1 volt, and then we measure both up and down from there. So in the analog domain, you'll see some measurements plus above 0 dB and some minus below 0 dB. Meanwhile, in the digital world, the only useful reference point we have is the maximum possible signal level, and that's called full scale, FS. So all the measurements that we use in the digital world, at least as far as determining how loud a recording is, they're done relative to the maximum level, which means all the useful measurements we'll see in a digital audio workstation are going to be negative. Which takes a little bit to wrap your brain around because it means that the higher the number looks, the lower it actually is. Now when we see these measurements in dBFS, full scale, and they're negative numbers, that's usually the peak level of a given track that we're working with. That's not going to be the number that you see on the fader itself. When we're mixing, by default, the faders are at what's called unity gain. And this is, by definition, zero decibels without any reference point, because now we're using a decibel as a comparison and not as a unit of measurement. Here I have an excerpt from a mix in progress. This is just the instrumental track. And you can see that it's well below full scale. None of the peaks even hit full scale. If we play this, you can see on the meter 
that the highest level that any, any peak has gotten to so far is, it says 3.6, that means negative 3.6 decibels full scale. So there's still almost 4 dB of headroom before it would, it would clip. Meanwhile, you can see the fader here is at zero. That means that whatever audio is stored in this file, it's just passing through with no volume change. The level will be exactly the same in and out. And if we change the fader, now the fader's at negative 10.4. Now the signal's being attenuated by 10.4 decibels. Attenuated means, of course, reduced in amplitude by that much. You could also call that negative gain. Or we can even boost it, we can add a positive number. We could go up to around three or so decibels before we hit clipping. Now we're in danger of clipping because there's, there we get, there we go. So you can see that this meter is now in red in 0 0.6. That means it's a positive number. The, the signal tried to go 0.6 dB over full scale and obviously it can't. So that tells us that in order to avoid that, we would have needed to drop the fader back down again. So with that in mind, with the idea of a fader or something else that can either let the sound pass through at unity gain or boost it with a positive number of decibels or reduce it, attenuate it by a negative number, this is our way that we can interpret an equalization graph. Now here's an EQ graph, and there's a variety of ways that we won't get into right now about how we can manipulate the signal. But I'd like to show you a couple things here. This is called a high pass filter because it filters out the low end. You hear it gets very uh, trebly sounding. And this curve that you see here is a graph of frequency on the x-axis and amplitude on the, on the y-axis. And if you'll notice here, zero is right in the middle and negative numbers are down here. That is the relative level of frequencies. So partials that are up here are being let through completely at zero dB of change. And as you go further and further down below this point of 1740 hertz, they're being attenuated more and more. I can turn off this filter here. Now I've got the whole thing. So thanks a lot for watching. As usual, feel free to leave comments or questions on YouTube. Uh, do all the fun YouTube things like subscribing and favoriting and everything. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.